Ah, the Andrew Lloyd Webber and Tim Rice musical Evita is currently celebrating its 40th anniversary and it's great to see the show back in Belfast at the Grand Opera House with Lucy O'Byrne playing the part of Eva Perron and Lucy joins me now in the studio. Lucy, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Very well, thank you. So we've got to the end of uh, the first week here in Belfast. How's it been for you? It's been amazing. It's so nice to be here. The audiences have been incredible and uh, this is only our third week so it's nice to have such a a nice welcome, I suppose, while we're still sort of starting off and finding our feet. It's lovely. So tell us about uh, the role of Eva Perron. Is this a dream role for you? Absolutely, yeah. Um, I actually played this role uh, in college, um, in my final college musical, which was like five years ago or six years ago or something. Um, so I never, you know, it seems like a once in a lifetime thing that you'll never get to do again. Obviously that was only for five days. This is more like five or six months, yes. which is amazing. So for Bill Kenwright to give me the chance to do it again was just like a dream come true. I never thought I'd get to do it and I'm loving every second of it. I'm shattered but <laughs> I'm absolutely loving it. So of course it's uh, 40 years since uh, the original version so it must be something special about doing this tour. Yeah it's it's incredible I mean it's all this show has always been special to me I mean the very fact that it's lasted 40 years proves that it is it is special because not many things will, will last, you know, and it's continuous. I mean, this particular version of this tour has been running for almost 11 years. So for that, I mean, for a tour, that's almost unheard of. Um, but people keep coming to see it. They love it. It's, it's iconic. Of course, the role of Eva has been played by so many people over the years. Everybody from Elaine Page to Madonna has played the part. So it was a big pressure for you coming into it then? Uh, yeah, it's, it is. It's huge. I mean, when you've got Elaine Page and Patti Lapone and, you know, obviously Madonna, you you do kind of it does enter your mind, obviously, when you get when you get the role first. But you've got to you've got to just put it out of your head and try and make it your own. I'm very lucky in the fact that the last three roles that I've played have been huge, like iconic musical theatre roles that have been played by like unbelievable women. So I was Maria in the Sound of Music. I'm Every, that's the same question everybody asks. <laughs> What's it like stepping into Julie Andrews' shoes? I'm like, please don't even say that to me. I'm trying not to think about it every day. So it's kind of the same thing for this. You just sort of have to, you know, accept those incredible renditions of it and then just try and find your own. So it must be great already. You've ticked all these great roles off your, your kind of bucket list already. Yeah. No, I'm incredibly lucky. I don't forget that for a second. <laughs> <laughs> so what about uh, the show then? I mean, there's so many big songs that we all remember from Evita. What's your favourite moments and your favourite songs in the show? My favourite song in the show is actually the last song in the show. It's called Lament, and I'm not sure that it's even necessarily one of the fam most famous. Um, it's just a really beautiful and haunting melody, um, and it's sort of she sort of just lays down everything that she did in it everything that she did in her life and kind of says there it is take it or leave it i'm not sorry i did i did what i i i wanted to do and i think it's just a really beautiful kind of calm moment after this whirlwind story of her life this sort of i made a difference because that was all she that was all she wanted you know she was a nobody she came from from nowhere and from nothing and she became the spiritual leader of mm. a nation and you know, she did, she, she really made a difference to many people's lives. And did you bring your own kind of special touches to Eva? Are you kind of similar to her in some ways or was there the bits you were allowed to, to add in yourself? I don't know if I'm, if I'm similar to her, um, but certainly there's things that we're allowed, you know, obviously we're allowed to make it our own. This is obviously more of a cast change. We're stepping into a tour that's out, so we, that was already out. So the three of us, m myself and Glenn Carter, who's playing Shay and, uh, Mike Sterling, who's playing Perron, we're the kind of new newbies, really. Everyone else has been out on the road. So we've got to sort of fit into everybody, what everybody else already knows what they're doing. But we can absolutely, we absolutely have enough room to make it our own. And I'm just having fun with it. You know, I know a lot about, as much as I think is possible to, to try and learn about Ava because she was, I mean, she was part of a, of a, fascist regime really so a lot of the information that we have about her is either propaganda or it's the kind of you know it's the the other side of the people that hated her basically that were against it so it's hard to have to find out what is really true 
but I have, you know, my idea of who she is and, and to that end it's just about, you know, for me, I am have full freedom to just have fun with that and I certainly have fun through all the things, all of the great things that she did and, you know, when she was younger and, uh, and, and just find, you know, for me, try and portray who I think she was, who, well, who I think she was and I have to believe that, that she had good intentions even yeah. though she's either you know, she is a saint or a demon to many people. If I'm trying to, you know, make an audience like her, I have to believe that what she did, she did out of, mm -hmm. from, from a good place. Someday for me, Argentina. <laughs> the truth is I never left you. All through my wild days, my bad existence. I kept my promise. <laughs> <laughs> Don't keep your distance. What about the big song, Don't Cry For Me, Argentina? <laughs> Everybody knows it. Everybody's yes. heard all the versions over the years as well. The first night you stepped out on stage to sing that in front of an audience, were you extremely nervous? Yes, because it's the one everybody waits yeah. for. It really is the one everybody waits for. Um, and you can hear a pin drop um, in that moment because it's a huge sort of surge of orchestral accompaniment for as you're walking on in the big white dress and the very first night I, you can actually hear people when you because it's huge glitter you know they give you everything to help you out they give you this amazing dress and the lights are incredible and you're up on this balcony towering above even the stage yeah. so you're almost at the level of the circle yeah. to the audience so you're you're looking down on on a lot of them and you, when you walk out first, you can hear people go, <gasps> and then it just goes to complete silence. Yes. They cut the orchestra, they go to complete nothing before you start there. It won't be easy, and everybody waits for it. And you can hear them breathe yeah. with you as you go, it won't be easy. <laughs> it, it is amazing. It's quite a special moment. And of course, here in Belfast as well, at the Grand Opera House, because even though it's a, it's a massive theatre that holds a thousand people, you're still really close to the audience, aren't you? Anna? Yeah, and it's it's gorgeous. It's great because we've been in kind of modern theatres up until this point. So, to we all walked out on stage at, at our warm up on the first day, and we're like, "Oh, look at this! It's so beautiful." <laughs> so it's re it's really nice. You're so close, and at that at particularly at that moment when you're up on the balcony, you know, you're at the level of everybody who are in the boxes on sides. You. You're almost close enough to like reach out and touch them, which is you know, it's it's excellent. You know, it's been, it's been so nice to be at the Opera House. It's just a gorgeous venue. So right from an early age, did you know this is what the road was going to be for you? Did you know you were going to do this? Yes. Yeah. My sister is an actor as well. They all live in Dublin still and work in Dublin. My sister does plays. She works in the Abbey and the Gate in Dublin, things like that. And my parents were both in musical theatre. My mum is a choreographer, a director. My dad uh, was a singer and an actor and is a director and a... Uh, he is also a musical director of choirs now as well. And wow. So it was always just part of our lives. So there would never really seemed like there was anything else. It just never really even crossed my mind yes, that yeah, there was anything yeah. else I was going to do. Yeah. It just sort of, this was my life and I was quite happy with that. A lot of people will also remember you from The Voice as well. Is that an experience that you're glad you did? Absolutely, yeah. I have only positive memories about the, you know, and positive thoughts about The Voice. It changed my life. It completely changed my life and I don't I don't regret a single thing about it. I, I didn't want to do it to begin with. I think that's where the kind of difference between me and a lot of the other contestants that ended up on it was. It wasn't something that I ever wanted. I did it because I didn't want to annoy my singing teacher and my agent. They were kind of like, just try it. You might get some exposure out of it. And that was all it, all it was. That was all I wanted was to get some exposure so I might get an audition. So in the end, I kind of, I did it just to kind of pacify them yes, yes and then ended up getting through and thought well if I can get a few rounds in then I can get some sort of exposure some sort of recognition and I'll be able to get seen for things which wasn't happening and uh, then I, I got way further than I ever intended to <laughs> but it, as each round went on it became more and more enjoyable it became more of a family the the whole crew and kind of that put it together and I made friends I'm pretty sure I made friends for life there, people that I'm, I'm still in contact with and that, you know, gave so much advice and so much help. And I just learned so much and, and had so many positive experiences and, and positive
positive relationships. In it. And Will I Am was, was looking after you, wasn't he? Yes. What's yeah. he like? He's amazing. He is a genius. Like, he really is. Um, no question. And he spent so much time with us and even, surprisingly, um, a lot of time off camera, which I wasn't expecting. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was expecting it would just be, you know, he'd show up and yeah. he'd, yeah. he'd give, you know, he'd show up just in time for filming and he'd kind of give you a couple of seconds worth of... But he took us out randomly, like he took us out for dinner before we start, even started filming. Wow. Once we all had the team, once we, he had his team complete, before we even got into like filming rounds, he took us all out for food and took us out for an evening of drinks and just to be like, okay, look, so this is what this, the competition is going to be like. And um, no matter how far you get, you need to have X, Y, and Z in place for yourself for when you come out. You know, he was really giving yeah. us everything he possibly could. I'm sure there'll be a lot of people watching this who would love to be doing what you're doing today and play all those major roles that you've played. What piece of advice would you give to young people starting off in the industry today? I get asked this a lot and I can never remember what I said. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's honestly, it's, it's perseverance. It's, it's believe in yourself no matter what anybody else. That sounds so cliche, but no matter what anybody tells you, you have to believe that you can do it and you have to stick it out no matter what anybody tells you because everyone is going to tell you no yeah you're going to get no's from everywhere yeah but you've if you if it's really truly what you want then you've just got to you've just got to go for it yeah and you've got you've and it's hard it's hard that that is hard work and it's like it takes a lot of it's a lot of sweat and tears. Yes, yeah. Um, like for me, it was leaving home, and I know it's not coming that far of Dublin to London, but it is quite. A, it was quite a culture shock for me, and ending up on your own and, and facing all this rejection, and all the when you have been told you're good and you think you're good, and you you know other people at home think you're good, and then you get there and everyone's like, yeah, but you're not good enough. Yeah. It's just fight. It's you've got to fight for it. And don't, don't ever think it's going to be easy. But if it's what you want, I promise it's worth it. Yeah. It really is. Is it a lonely life being a performer when you're away from the, the theatre and away from the showtime? And... It can be, but I mean, I've always been lucky on, I mean, when you're on tour, your company becomes like a family. You know, we all, I mean, we spend, we're, we live in each other's pockets, so everyone has to get on. Yes, you don't have yeah. any choice. And, and that's lovely. Everyone sort of supports each other through it. Um, this cast particularly is amazing. There's so much energy in it. You come in for your third double show day in a row and everyone is still like, yeah, it's okay. We've got this. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I miss my family and I miss my partner when I'm on the road. I miss my dogs. Um, but, you know, we can, I FaceTime all the time and you get home when you can. And, it can be in a way, but you've got a network of people around you who are who are living exactly the same thing, and everybody understands. So it's also it's also a lovely community that that the, well theatre is is a lovely community. It's really supportive and loving. So once you finish in Evita, do you know what's next for you? Not having just started this, it's all I can think about. I dream Evita. <laughs> I literally I sing it in my sleep wake myself up sometimes <laughs> doing that um, it's all I can think or talk about at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> well you're here in Belfast at the Grand Opera House until the 11th of August. Yes. So enjoy the rest of your run here in Belfast Lucy and thank you for joining us. Not at all, thank you. Thank you.